a lot of people love chocolate. And this is the tree they come, dude. I'm glad I did this thing right, because I could have sucked. <laughs> Join me, Mike Clarkson, on Zilla's one-of-a-kind adventure care series, Beyond the Glass, as we study the wild relatives of our captive bred pets in order to better understand how to care for them. Let's go Beyond the Glass. Welcome to the Misa Ho Ho Forest. As you can tell, this is a very lush part of West Africa. Lots of water, lots of ferns, and that's why we're here, because we're looking for water skinks. I'm gonna slowly work my way down this creek between all the waterfalls and check around all the rock cracks and all the leaf litter. That's usually where you find the water skinks. There's tons of mosses and ferns and different rock-dwelling epiphytes. I mean, the life starts here, and it goes downstream all the way down into the valley. Check this out. Look familiar? This is an African water fern. They're really common in big box pet stores, usually in the aquatics department. Perfect plant for a water skink because it occurs in their natural habitat where we are right now. Oh, check that out. Dude, it's a slippery frog tadpole. These are one of the most evolutionarily distinct frogs in the world, one of the most critically endangered. They've been thought to be extinct my entire life, or at least most of it, and, and here they are, a bunch of them in this water. I see little tadpoles, I see big tadpoles. They actually spend a decent amount of time as tadpoles from four months all the way up to a year. It kind of varies. In any case, I don't want to disturb these guys. It's a critically endangered frog. So I'm gonna go down river a bit more, let these guys be there far too important to their kind to be messed with. Other animals that call this place home include tree cobras, forest cobras, gaboon vipers, boiga, tailless whip scorpions. I mean, this is really a super special place. It doesn't only look beautiful, but it is home to some fantastic West African species. So this strange tree with these kind of ugly little pods are cacao pods. And you might not know cacao, but you do know chocolate because a lot of people love chocolate. And this is the tree they come to. I'm glad I did this thing right, because I could have sucked. <laughs> this is an emerald snake. He's got a little bit of blue on it. He's got giant eyes, blue underscales, really green body, and looks dangerously close to the boom slong, which would uh, end your day, and all the ones that follow it. But these guys are rear fang culebrids. They're not considered especially dangerous. And they were a snake that I've wanted to see for some time. Thank you, chocolate tree. If we hadn't stopped to look at you, wouldn't have found this. Far better prize. So these guys do get bigger than this. When he's calm, he's all green. But when he gets irritated, he becomes almost black and blue. He's got like two blue spots. That's the underscales. There are other snakes that do that, but they really do it nicely. They are arboreal Culebrids, they live in the trees, assumably eating geckos and frogs, and they do get bigger than this. But they spend most of their lives hanging out in the trees, hunting by day, sleeping by night. So cool. Man, I love your little specialist arboreal culebrids. All of them just have such personality, and this guy being so visual and so just kind of, he's got an attitude. I like it. But he's certainly not our target, so. Time to go back home, buddy. Let's go right there. You got it? Water skinks 
live on all this leaf litter on top of the rocks on the sides of the creek, where there's also a lot of ants, but there's also a lot of arthropods and a lot of bugs breaking down the leaves that are just sitting on solid rock. These guys are a lot easier to find than to catch. And uh, yeah, just gonna have to keep raking leaves. It's chore day. Oh, oh, oh. Got him, got him, <laughs> got him. You guys put up quite the fight. Wow. So this is the African water skink. These super aquatic little lizards are rad. I kept looking at all the leaf litter, but this guy was actually in the submerged leaf litter, which, uh, you know, just goes to show you, they can take on, oh, you're trying to bite, huh? You think you're tough. Super visual, he's just checking things out. He's got some checkering, spotting around his lips. His underbelly is a different color than the top. He does have a keel to his scales. It gives him that aquatic lizard look for sure. A pretty thick tail too. This guy is really cool, but he's also small and fragile. I don't want to stress him out anymore, so we're gonna let him go. There you go, little guy. He's got his own exclusive pool. All right, so let's get some measurements. The UVI is not that high. These leaves are filtering out a lot of your UV, but there is still some. And with insectivores, it's always really important. UVA, some UVA, not a ton. Not as much as say down in the valley or up on the top of the hill. Our rocks are ranging from 82 to 85 degrees. 85 surface. The surface temperature is surprisingly lower in most places here than is the ambient temperature, but that's because the rocks are wet, so you get evaporative cooling. So usually where rocks are a hot spot, here it's cooler. And because the waterfalls, our uh, humidity is pretty high at 77%. So. I could see the allure to it. You could build him an awesome little vivarium that for him would be tons of room. I mean, imagine a medium block and you have mosses and plants and isopods and you're gonna want fruit flies, pinhead crickets. Obviously, clean water is essential and I would have some movement to it. Alrighty, another awesome mission completed in a beautiful, fantastic forest. It's been a pleasure to be here and now I have the displeasure of the hike back out. Maybe I'll just live here now. Nah, we've got more to do.